Hello, and oh look, I've got a mark keep in the background. So uh, spin around that way. That's a bit better, isn't it? Um, hi, welcome to uh, this week's vlog. This week I was hoping to have really exciting, lots of riding and exciting cool stuff, um, but it didn't work out like that for various reasons. Go have a look at my Instagram if you want to know why. Uh, so instead, there comes Charlie, we are walking the dogs and I'm going to talk to you about how I plait Bellamy's mane and get it under control and ready for showing. <laughs> So if you are new here, this is what Bellamy's mane looks like unplatted. So uh, yeah, it's looking quite unimpressed here. Um, I'm just going to walk you through what, what we do. So here I've got a very, very damp body brush. Um, it's got horsehair bristles, but they're quite firm. So I'm just making sure it's really well damped down. Um, you can see even then the water isn't really holding it down. And I take, so just over three fingers so my I'm using the first three fingers with you know maybe a couple of millimeters spacing in between them um, making sure I've got a really nice straight parting with the comb and then using a hair clip to clip the hair down um, then I'm going to comb that section out uh, making sure there's no tangles making sure it's nice and flat and I use this plaiting gel from smart grooming um, I will put a link in the description to have a look this I think is the third time I've plaited with it um, and I've been really impressed with it. It holds the hair nicely, it makes it kind of tacky and sticky when you plait but it doesn't kind of leave that grease in the hair um, with the other gels do so I'm just put it, running some through the hair and then combing it down again. Um, you can see he's kind of going to sleep here, he enjoys this. And then on the top of the mane I use this Smart Grooming Plaiting Wax. Now this I've been using for about two years and it is really good. Um, honestly if you've got stray hairs or anything, I really recommend it. This is sticky and it is a bit tacky. Um, so you have to be a bit careful if you have a horse that rolls or if you know you're some you know like trailers for example with hay nets I tend to put a fly rug or something over the top of these uh, because the the wax does tend to attract the dust and, and some of the dirt but once it's dried in it really really holds so I've started plaiting here now my first two turns so you've got three equal sections my first two turns are fairly loose you don't want them really tight you don't want to be pulling his hair really tight into his head and neck um, and after that I'm pulling the hair really really tight um, using my thumb to secure it down to create a nice plait now, I always sew plaits in um, I can band but not as well and the bands just don't hold his hair as well so I'm using the again smart grooming uh, waxed plaiting thread which I think has been another bit of a game changer for us um, I've never used waxed thread this was the first time I plaited with it um, and I was really impressed so I'm going up from the bottom to secure the thread in around to the right and underneath back up through the plait and then over to the left to create a knot to secure the end then I'm folding it over wrapping the thread round twice and then th looping the needle through the end of the plait so that secured the end of the plait there I'm then going to go up and pass the needle up under his neck once um, and then roll my plait up so you've got two options here you can either stitch that bit in but I decided because his mane is fairly short I'm not going to now I don't loop the thread over the top of the plait I go up and down so I've gone down through the plait then back up again and there's the finished article and I do that a couple of times just to hold it in um, and that is your your finished plait so next plait um, exactly the same thing again so just over three fingers wide making sure the mane's really well combed down it's still damp making sure the camera's recording I actually had to swap cameras here because the first camera's uh, memory card was full so I then had to switch to record from my phone so that was really helpful um, yeah so just three fingers wide secure the mane down with a hair grip um, plaiting gel plaiting wax and at this point I'm showing you the plaiting gel and wax again because I didn't realise that the first camera had actually recorded the first plait um, it just told me when I'd finished it that the memory card was full so that's helpful 
Um, yeah, and, and same thing again. Right, I'm going to slow down the speed plaiting just a little bit to tell you about preparation. Now, if you have a look at one of my previous videos, which is linked above, um, you'll see how I prepare his mane for plaiting. Um, so I will do the mane kind of um, preparation where I kind of really cut it and thin it a lot about six, eight, maybe 12 weeks before I start going out. Um, and then around two weeks before I want to plait it properly, that's when I'll just pull it gently. So just, just every few days, just kind of thinning it and thinning it, making sure it's nice and level. That is key. That is what is going to get you good plaits. It's not magic. It's not mega skills. It's having a really well prepared mane. So that is my biggest tip right at the beginning. Make sure you prepare your mane well. So this plant I'm securing slightly different to the first one. Now this is where his mane starts to get a little bit thick and a little bit unruly. So I'm securing it at the bottom the same way. So right, left, make a knot and then two loops. This time, so I folded it up and under and I'm actually securing the bottom of the plait um, at the base of his neck this time, just to help hold it a bit more securely and make sure that um, I can get kind of a nice shape to it. And then I go back up with the needle, back down again, and through. Um, anyone who doesn't normally plait with threads, obviously not plaiting to the horse. This is the thread secures it in the mane. It's not hurting him. I mean, obviously, look, he's really chilled. Um, yeah, so this just creates a bit of a more secure plait and a nicer shape by uh, securing the fold over. Um, his mane starts to get a bit thicker and longer here. Um, cut the end of the thread and next plait. Right, onto his forelock now. I decided to do his forelock next because he was really nice and sleepy and not wanting to eat his hay. Um, eating hay isn't necessarily bad unless you're trying to plait the forelock. So same as always, nice damp hair, plaiting gel and then plaiting wax. So I French plait his forelock. I would like to be able to Dutch plait it, but my brain can't figure that out. I'm not gonna to explain to you how to French plait because again, I don't think I'm clever enough to do that, but I will put a link to Baxter Equine Services who really explains it beautifully and is much better at plaiting. But basically, the key to a nice French forelock plait is very, very small pieces of mane, um, or forelock rather. Bellamy's forelock's a bit of a pain. It's quite thick and it's quite long. If you shorten it too much, um, he, it's difficult to plait, uh, but it's a bit too long to kind of fold over nicely. But really, <clears throat> you want nice small sections. You want the plait tight, but you don't want the head pulled tight. So when you're plaiting over, hold down the middle of the plait. So when you pull a piece over, hold that down firmly with your thumb to keep that section tight, but don't pull the head skin tight because like Bellamy's gonna have these plaits in for, I don't know, 18 hours or so. And if you pull his forehead tight, he's gonna have a sore head. It's gonna be uncomfortable. So bear that in mind. So yeah, and I'm just folding over, taking very, very small pieces of mane. Now, when I get to the bottom of the uh, forelock, so the section where the hair actually grows out of, not the end of the hair, um, that's where I start to take slightly larger pieces and kind of plait those together. So you want your plait to be nice and tight and neat up until the end of the plait uh, because that end section is actually where you're going to be folding it over. So um, you want to have nice small pieces and kind of a nice sort of graduated effect. Now a French plait will sit flat on its head but a Dutch plait would kind of sit a bit, a bit more raised because you plait the hair underneath. Um, so I would love to have a, well, I'd love to be able to do it, but, but I, I can't. 
So yeah, look, I'm at the end of his forelock now, so I'm just going to plait slightly bigger pieces in. He really enjoys having this done. Um, finish the plait off. Again, make sure once you get um, below where the hair actually attaches to his head, you can start plaiting a bit tighter, much like with his mane. Um, make sure it's really nice and tight and you plait as close to the end as you can so that you don't end up with sticky outy bits. Um, this particular one, now I wasn't very prepared, I'm going to uh, sew in. You don't have to sew them in. What I normally do is actually band um, the forelock in, uh, just, just with a plaiting band um, to secure the end. So I'm doing the same as I do for the main plaits. Um, thread on the r over the right and then over the left to create a knot. Uh, turn over the end, loop around twice and then up. Um, this one I've actually done up and down a couple of times just to make sure the plait is really well secured. Um, cut the excess thread off. Oh look, I've done an extra loop as well. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't usually uh, sew these ones. So cut the excess thread off once you have uh, finally finished securing it. I feel like I should probably speed this up, shouldn't I? Wow, that plait is, is not coming out, is it? There is no way that is going to come out. So then I use these forceps. Got them from Smart Grooming. Um, but they're just kind of grippy scissors. They don't cut, though. Um, you stick them through the top of the plait. Follow his head down to the bottom of the plait. And then grab the end where you stitched it or where you've secured it with a band and then pull it up into itself. Now this is where you need your plait nice and tight at the bottom and you need to add, be adding small bits. If you've added really, really large, I'm just cutting a piece of thread off there. If you add really big bits to your plait while you're French plaiting and you fold it over like this, you're going to end up with a big bulge. But because I've added small sections here, it's ended up with a nice neat forelock plait and I love this pony he's so cute um, and I'm just cutting off a little tuft of um, woolly winter hair that I missed the last time I clipped him um, but if you've got any stray hairs that's where the plaiting wax comes in really nicely so you can just use a little bit of wax up the side uh, just to fold those hairs down but let's continue with the plaiting So here is the section that I actually managed to clip off. Uh, so when I clipped him in January, I think it was, I managed to clip out a chunk of his mane. So you can see the fifth plait down is quite a lot smaller than the other four. Um, that would be because his mane is about half the thickness. Um, but you can see how good the plaiting gel and the plaiting wax are in that they're actually holding it all together. The good thing about stitching is that you can use the thread to kind of hold those hairs down um, and stop them from um, sticking out quite so much. So you can see on the fourth plait there's a few little sticky uppy bits, um, but it, it's, not, it's not that bad. So yeah, going through this bit, I'm actually taking slightly smaller sections. So rather than having my fingers like three fingers slightly spaced, I'm going for three fingers close together. Now these are for dressage. If I were taking him out showing, I would probably be doing slightly bigger plaits with slightly uh, bigger sections on the top to kind of just enhance his top line a bit. He's looking like he's lacking some muscle uh, with these plaits because they're quite flat and on, down on his neck. So I'd actually be plaiting him with slightly bigger plaits to kind of give him the look of having a longer neck. Um, and also enhancing his top line by sort of just in increasing the, uh, you know, putting the plaits higher up on his neck and the two sections of mane that, that you've used to plait in at the top, kind of just um, puffing those up a bit so that you, you look like you've got more top line than you have. Um, it's not going to fool an experienced judge, but it does just kind of add to your look. Um, yeah, so again, just those top couple of turns, fairly loose and then plaiting down.
All right, so I've said it, I think this is the third time I've said don't plait too tightly on their neck. Make sure your first couple of turns are quite loose, but it gets more and more important the further down the neck you go. So in dressage particularly, you've got free walk on a long rein, you want your horse to stretch down. Therefore, to help encourage that, don't plait the skin so tight they can't stretch. Um, so this becomes more important as you get further down towards the wither um, because there's actually a lot more stretch there than there would be up near his head. Um, so we don't plait the head too tightly so we don't give him a headache but also we don't plait as we get down to the wither too tightly because we want him to be able to stretch and not be impinged by his hair being pulled too tight. That doesn't mean you're going to have massive great golf ball plaits. It just means that, I mean, you, I mean, look how thick his hair is here. I'm still doing three small fingers here, by the way, because it's just so thick. Um, it just means that you are allowing your horse to stretch. Um, so you will see that as I get further down the mane, the plaits are actually going to start getting a bit bigger again. So these next couple are still quite small um, because they... The, uh, the mane is just so thick here. Um, but as we get further down, they're going to start getting a bit bigger and a bit looser. Okay, so at this point, his mane is actually starting to get thinner again. Um, so you can see three fingers again, but I've just spaced them out a bit more. Um, and so I've got a slightly bigger chunk of mane. So here, the mane is a bit longer, um, but it's an awful lot thinner than the rest of it. So it's a lot nicer to plait, actually. Um, again, I've used a comb to create the parting. Always use a comb um, because it's really obvious when you've got zigzag partings um, once you're plaited up to so make sure you use a comb to make it nice and straight and sharp and neat so plaiting gel and then the wax will go on top and just plait it down like normal So here you can really start to see where I've left the top couple of turns quite loose. Um, so on this plait that I've just finished off, you can see they're quite bulgy at the top. Now, because of the plaiting gel and the plaiting wax, it's actually going to hold the hair down really nicely, but it's not too tight. And I really would have liked the rest of the mane to have worked out like this, but um, and for showing, that's how I would have liked all of the plaits to look. But, uh, yeah, but like I said, definitely as you get towards the bottom, make sure they're loose so that the horse can stretch. I mean, you can see even when he's just eating his mane, how much the skin there is stretching out um, as he's putting his head down compared to sort of up near nearer his head where it doesn't stretch quite so much. So yeah, 
do not do that too tightly otherwise it will be uncomfortable for your horse um, here I'm taking ever so slightly bigger chunks um, partly to make his neck look a bit longer I mean it's dressage I'm gonna say it doesn't matter it does matter but it's just not quite as important as it would be for showing which is all judged on appearance um, but yeah it just kind of number one makes his neck look a bit longer number two it helps keep the plait a little bit looser um, now also for showing I would usually do slightly fewer plaits now I'm going to be honest with you it's two years really since I've done showing so I'm a bit out of practice with those kinds of plaits so I need to work on that um, but normally I would do fewer I think I will end up with about 15 plaits if I remember rightly maybe 17 um, and for showing I would really prefer 11 to 13 um, just because here you can see it's they're, they're neat apart from that sticky you can see sticky uppy bits between a four and five and five and six um, but there's just a bit too much going on for my liking really so I would want them to have a bit more space in between them be you know be a bit more puffy on top like that plait that I've just done um, and kind of be sit up on his neck a little bit more to give that illusion of top line um, and you can see with the previous plait I did that is a bit more puffy on top that's the technical term by the way um, it, it's sitting really quite up on his neck so that it's it is kind of giving that illusion of him just being a bit more muscled than he perhaps is at this point um, when was this this was early May so he was about three three and a half weeks into back into being ridden after having uh, nearly four weeks off so yeah he is lacking some muscle and top line but we were going out to do one prelim one test um, go watch that vlog if you want to see how we did just going to slow this bit right down because um, his mane is actually a sensible length and a sensible thickness here so I can do some lovely lovely plaits. Um, you can see the previous two where they're sitting just up a bit higher and that's really where I'd like them for showing. They're still a bit small for showing but because I've started with a size from the top trying to keep it a little bit consistent. Um, they are a bit bigger though so you can see because the top is quite loose but the plait's quite tight I'm able to really fold that plait up tightly but the mane hasn't actually gone tight over his neck so when he's putting his head down while he's eating his hay that um, slack that he's got at the top of his neck it is tightening up but it's not pulling and that I'm going to say it again it's so important please don't have your plaits so tight that they're actually pulling your horse's mane when they try and pull put their head down um, especially with dressage if you want a nice free walk on a long rein also this wax thread is amazing look how easy it just was to thread the needle so I've plaited what 14 13 maybe plaits now and I'm still just like pushing the bit of thread through the needle now these ones are going to start getting a bit smaller again so I've counted how many I have on the neck and I think I've got about three left to do um, the mane's getting very thin and wispy so they're just getting a little little bit smaller here um, to kind of just allow that space um, once you get down to this part of the mane um, it's important they're not too tight but you know you can still plait it when it starts to get short and wispy um, you can still make it look good
Okay, finishing touches now. Now again, this is why it's really important to leave the first couple of turns loose, is what you can actually then do is very gently go back up your plaits and pull them from the ball just to puff up that bit of mane to just kind of give them a bit more volume, maybe even them out a little bit. Um, if your plaits aren't tight, so you know, if once you've got past those first couple of turns, they're not tight, they're gonna just pull into weird shapes like that guy did. If they're nice and tight, however, but loose at the top, you're going to be able to create a really nice shape. So you see these bottom four, where his mane's actually a nice, you know, thickness and length. Um, it just creates a really, really nice shape. And you can also see as he's moving his head, he, the, the mane is actually stretching out. So it's allowing him to stretch his head down comfortably. And here is the finished article. Um, so you can see they are relatively small. They're quite neat go a bit weird, number four and five, where I've lost half his mane. Um, and then as they get to the bottom, they get actually really quite nice. But they're all quite nice and loose on top. You can see that teeny weeny one where he's got a very, very small amount of mane, where he's rug rubbed. Um, but you can see where he's moving his head, the mane isn't pulling. Um, and like I said, those ones further down, so these ones here, where I've managed to plait them really high up with those nice puffy bulges has actually created that look of more top line. So try and do that if you're lacking a bit of muscle in the ring. So that's it. Um, I hope you found that useful. Comment, ask questions if you've got any. Let me know if you'd like some more of this. Just wondering where the dog's gone. He's there. He's still zooming. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you picked up some tips if you also have a horse with a really uncontrollable mane. So thanks very much for watching. Please like, subscri subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. And hopefully soon there'll be more exciting riding stuff. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.